It's been 9,632 days and I'm still broken. I'm defective like a clock that was hammer smashed by Captain James Hook swept up in a spree of righteous anger. To be fair, during that time I've generously added to my stockpile of reasons why I suck at life and I probably didn't shoot out the womb a dud. Only needed to be fixed the moment I decided something was wrong with me, but once I did, I went out and verified it again and again. I had to prove that I'm a fluke, my parents goofed when I got scooped. I moved from one person to the next, a mosquito on the hunt for thicker blood and a crowd full of blood thinner popping junkies. I peeled open my chest and showed them what's inside and then I gave them every reason to dine on my innards and leave me out to dry in the cold, cruel, bright and yellow sun, beating down on me like a drum made of gravel slathered above a soil long depleted. And when the sun set, the weather shifts and winter sets in and my chest gets stiffed as it's stuffed to the brim of snow and I'm thrown into a frenzy of deciding which next step is the best fit for me. Or a fit for my steel-toed boots collecting dust in the closet, a nagging reminder of all the ideals that I used to stand behind but never had the balls to stand in front of. Caught up in a current of decisions like genocide and suicide wrapped into one inconvenient package. Every time I decide, I'm not making choices because I'm severing every present alternative and previous option as I die into a new version of myself. I see this version of me smiling, extending his hand with a big ass grin on his broader, wider, lighter face. He has white teeth and clean hands and is so damn authentic in his compassionate gaze. It's almost as if he's saying, hey man, you've made it this far. Although you aren't forsaken, please be aware that with every ounce of progress you make, you're going to find that there's even further to go than you realized, even in your clearest moments. So the road before you isn't actually shortening as you learn, but rather expanding far beyond what your eyes can see or feet will reach. An endless landscape full of the gaping void of what you'll never, ever know. You'll never wake up as the man I am, as the man you see yourself to be, because that man is with you all along. He's taking deep breaths and long strides and dusty boots, but he's buried in a mess of fear and doubt and the incessant desire to feel growth and control. Your stories rule you because you let them, and when you stop telling brand new ones, the old ones creep up and show their ugly face and make you leap into the chaos like you never left it and didn't miss it, and then the cycle of pain starts up again. You're duped in a loop and you find that you're still just a clumsy, overgrown adolescent who's lost and unloved by your mother and used, ignored, and lied to by women again and again and again and again. It's like a repeat of a really bad dream that's not quite a nightmare, but more like an old movie, but you forgot your glasses in your car so you can't see shit in the theater and the sound is muffled because there's too many people in the room and too much sweat for you to breathe through. The humidity is so thick it clogs your lungs with moisture and when you go to scream for help, nothing but a garbled mess of saliva and whimpering escapes your lips and it's drowned out by the narrative of a story far more interesting than you'll ever be to anyone else. And so the movie ends and the credits roll and people leave you lying on the floor with your face pressed up against a sticky combination of popcorn, candy, soda, and semen. But reality is kind enough for you to feel it all, for you to stumble, for you to fall, for you to crawl, for you to be confused and dirty and forgotten and wrong. My brokenness is all mine, and rather than seeing it as a dirty, shameful roadblock, I get to have it, hold it, keep it, embrace it like a mother cradles the infant son even when he won't stop screaming, barfing, and defecating. I haven't stopped screaming! Through the beauty and strangeness of this expansive experience, I've come to see that each and every one of us have nothing at stake and everything to gain in every waking second of our unasked for lives. When we lift our masks and drop our stones, we can find the magical space where we can hold hands without a meaning we care, without a meaning we want to fuck each other, without a meaning we want money out of the deal. There's a space where we can just exist, side by side, not even as one, but one, in the realization that we are all part of a living, breathing organism that is much bigger than we can imagine in our own little lives and trials and victories, our little puffs of smoke in the soup of the universe that might go unnoticed but are never, ever unfelt. Look, I might not know what's real, but I can feel this, and because I do, I want to make this world better. This might not have any meaning, and we might not be here to learn anything, but for me, for you, and for whoever has the honor and privilege and burden of dealing with the vomit and clutter I leave behind when I die, I want to make their burdens lighter and more manageable because they're going to experience this realness too, or whatever the hell this is. They will, all the way until the day that they don't anymore. And if this is all there is, it might as well be awesome while it lasts.